It's time for Lucille Ball and My Favorite Husband. Yes, it's the new gay family series starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers tonight, we find a familiar domestic drama taking place. They're invited to the Atterbury's for dinner. George is standing in the downstairs hall, fully dressed with his top coat on. Liz is upstairs, going through an ancient ritual known to wives as getting ready to go out. And known to husbands as, what do they do up there that takes so long? Well, right now, George is looking at his watch for the 11th time. Liz, for heaven's sake, aren't you dressed yet? I'll be ready in a minute, dear. Well, hurry up. We're going to be late. I'll be ready in a minute, dear. Mm. Might as well read the papers. Liz, where's tonight's papers? I'll be ready in a minute, dear. <laughs> no, I'll have to go up and supervise this job. Liz, you know the Atterbury's like us to be prompt. Now, what's keeping you? I'll be ready in a minute. Oh, hi, George. Oh, Liz, I thought you said you were all ready. I am. Well, you're going to look awfully silly at the dinner party in your slip. Now, George, I'm hurrying. Well, what have you been doing? You should have been ready an hour ago. Well, it's your fault. My fault? Yes, I wasted an hour stopping to tell you I'd be ready in a minute. <laughs> well, what are you doing now? I'm fixing my nails. Oh, no, forget it and come on. Forget it? I don't have any polish on my right hand. Well, nobody will notice it. Nobody will notice it? Of course not. Keep your hand behind your back. Won't they wonder why I'm shaking hands with my foot? <laughs> Believe me, Liz, it's more important to get there than to have your nail polish perfect. Oh, you don't care how I look when you're in a hurry. I do, too. How is my hair? Fine. Beautiful. It happens to be up in curlers. <laughs> well, it looks good to me. Now, now please hurry, Liz. I'm practically ready, and you're not helping any. I'll get your dress out for you. Uh, which dress are you going to wear? I don't know. You don't know? Well, frankly, George, I haven't a thing to wear. <laughs> Nothing to wear? You've got a whole closet full of clothes. Uh, what about that black one with the sequins? Oh, I can't wear that. Iris Atterbury has seen me in it. Well, what about the blue print that I like? Iris has seen me in that, too. Well, why don't you wear my long underwear? She hasn't seen you in that. <laughs> A big help. I guess I'll wear my green taffeta. Good, I'll get it. Here, Liz. Just a minute. What's the matter with you? We're late. I'm hurrying. You are not. You're just sitting there. And who are you waving at? I'm drying my nail polish. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Isn't there anything you can do while it's drying? Yes. Yeah, put a broom in my mouth and I'll sweep the floor. <laughs> Just for that, you take a cab. I'll meet you over there. Oh, honest, George, I'm rushing. Here, this hand is dry. I'll use it. Oh, Liz, look out! What are you doing with those pliers? Oh, they're not pliers. I'm curling my eyelashes. <laughs> That's the most frightening thing I've ever seen. Now, leave me alone, George, and I'll hurry. I don't understand it. Why does it take you two hours to get dressed and it only takes me 15 minutes? That's because you're a man. A man can get by with a minor repair job, but a woman has to completely overhaul her equipment. <laughs> well, let's not stand here arguing, Liz. We're late, and I'm famished. Oh, so am I. I'm starved. Come on, give me the dress. Yes. Yeah. I'll be ready in just... Oh, darn it! Now what's the matter? I smeared my nail polish. Now I have to do that hand over. Oh, no. Now, George, don't stand around making me nervous. Oh, but Liz... Go downstairs and have a cigarette or something. Liz, we're invited there for dinner. Now hurry up. I'll be ready in a minute, dear. All right, George, I'm ready. George, where are you? George? I'm upstairs, Liz. What are you doing? I'll be ready in a minute, dear. <laughs> what? George Cooper, if you made me climb these stairs for some silly... George, why are you sitting there on the bed in your shorts? Well, I just got to thinking. Mr. Atterbury has seen me in my blue suit. <laughs> George, if you're trying to make fun well, of me... Well, not only that, he's seen every tie I own. Oh, what can you do? 
Oh, stop being so smart and get dressed. Come on, George. You're horribly late. I'll be ready in a minute, dear. Now, what are you doing? I'm fixing my nails. Oh. <laughs> you like this color? It's called bachelor's carnation. My good bottle of Revlon. What did you pour it in the water glass for? Oh, I can't be bothered painting it on. I just dip my fingers in <laughs> I guess the joke, George. Now put your feet on. I'll be ready in a minute, dear. Oh, do me a favor, will you? What? Lend me your curler. My eyelashes are as straight as string. <laughs> I'm so mad. There we are, George. We're not so awfully late. Now, when we go in, we'll apologize for being late. I'll make some excuses. I tell them you had engine trouble. Well, just let me make the excuses. I can think of something better than that. Oh, George, look. Through the window. They're still in the living room. They haven't started eating. Thank goodness. <sighs> I'm starved. Yeah. You know, Atterbury had me in his office all lunch hour. I didn't have time to eat lunch either. I'm dying of hunger. Oh, I hope they had something good. Oh. Liz girl, George boy. Hello, Mr. Atterbury. Good evening, sir. Come in, come in. We expected you a little earlier. Well, I'm sorry we're late, Mr. Atterbury. Uh, 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 we had engine trouble. Oh. Really? Yes, the old wreck just couldn't seem to get going. <laughs> I don't like the way you put that. <laughs> Well, come on into the living room. Iris is waiting. Oh, I'm so ashamed to keep you waiting. Hello, Iris. Liz, girl. George, boy. <laughs> come in and sit down. Iris, I hope we haven't ruined your dinner. Oh, not at all. Of course not. It was delicious. <laughs> what? You mean you finished dinner? Oh, a half an hour ago. When we say seven o'clock, we mean it. <laughs> of course, I could have cooked this something for you. Even though she's already done the dishes and it's her night out and she's getting ready to go to the movies. Oh. Well, Iris, I hate to make her do it, but I'm so Thanks, darn... Iris, but we've eaten. But yeah. We've eaten. When we saw how late it was getting, we had a snack while the mechanic was fixing the car. Oh. Well, it's a shame you didn't get here, Liz. We had your favorite meal. Really? Yes, sir. Pork chop. Pork chop? Yes, Rudolph said to have baked pork chops for Liz. Oh, thanks a lot. And you should have tasted the potatoes. I can taste them. <laughs> Delicious big baked one, cut open and just full of butter. Big globs of cheese and butter. Big globs of cheese and butter? Yes, yes, and fresh tender asparagus tips with a creamy hollandaise sauce. Now go on, go on. What else did you have? Well, let me up and I'll tell you. Come on, come on. What did you have for dessert? Liz, stop pushing him against the wall. Liz, are you sure you've eaten? Yes, we both have. Wipe your mouth with your goo. Well, uh, maybe you'd like some after-dinner mint. Where are they? Oh, uh... Yes, uh... I think I have room left for just one teeny, teeny little mint. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you. Mm, very tasty. Mm, it's very good, Iris. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Oh. Would you like some, George? Yes, please. I'll go refill the bowl. <laughs> now, uh, don't bother. Uh, would you care for a cigar, George? I'll take one. Oh. <laughs> you can't eat that, can you? <laughs> no, no. Oh, well, there's nothing like a good after-dinner cigar. Uh, unless it's a good before cigar dinner. <laughs> well, well uh, what shall we do this evening? I thought we could go to a movie. Oh, good idea. Uh, which movie would you like to see? Oh, anywhere where they sell popcorn. Stop it, Liz. Forget about food. Well, I'll do my best. And say, here's a picture of the strand I've been wanting to see for some time. Well, good. We'll go there. What is it? Chicken every Sunday. Oh, no! Another banana, George? No, Hank. I've had three. Who's in there? 
Oh, it's you, Mrs. Cooper, and Mr. Cooper. Okay. Okay. Oh, my goodness, isn't it Atterbury Caesar? No, we got there too late, thanks to Mrs. Cooper. We practically cleaned out your icebox, Katie. Mm. Oh, but I was just getting ready to do my hair when I heard you. I left the wave set in the bowl on the sink. I better get it out of the way before you eat it. <laughs> The bowl is empty. Wasn't that custard? <laughs> oh, no, no. Liz, get that silly smile off your face. I can't. My lips are shutting away. <laughs> now, stop that. It won't hurt you. Look at us, Katie. Which stomach has the Tony? <laughs> Come on, silly. Good night, Katie. Good night. You know, I'm glad we waited till now, George. I like having midnight snacks with you. Oh, go on, kiss me, George. Give me a good night snack. No. Ah, oh, you're not still mad at me for being late, are you, George? Well, wouldn't you be if you were me? Yes, but you're so much nicer than I am and so much more tolerant and you're so wonderful. That's and enough. You're... I get the idea. Well, don't be mad. What are we going to do about your being late all the time? Aren't you used to it by now? <laughs> no. How do you think it looks, Liz, when I'm late to my own boss's house? You think I can't manage my affairs? Well, it's just one of those things, George. Everybody in my family is late. I'm late. My mother's late. My grandmother's late. The only person who was ever on time was my late grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have as much time every day as anyone else has. 24 hours. Whoever settled on 24 hours anyway? I'll bet it was a man. A woman would have known she'd need at least 26. Well, I'm starting a new system around here. You're going to start budgeting your time. What do you mean, budgeting my time? Well, allotting so much time to each thing you do. Budget like you do your money. Like I budget money? Uh, correct, and like normal people budget money. <laughs> You're not serious. Never more. I'll make a chart for you. Fifteen minutes for this, half an hour for that, ten minutes for something else. I'll need more than ten minutes for something else. <laughs> George, George, if I go on this time budget, will you, will you stop being mad at me? Hmm? Yes, I will. Now, now, I'll make up the chart right now. No, you don't. I got the next half hour budgeted already. What for? Smoothie. Oh, come on, George. Let's not waste a minute. I sat to the kitchen door. Yes, I saw it. Oh, Mrs. Hoover, you don't really expect me to stick to that silly time schedule. I'm afraid so, Katie. George put his foot down. Well, I don't like to be told when to do what. He's got something down for every minute of the day. It won't work. Oh, no, I don't know, Katie. It's worked fine for me so far this morning. I got up at 10 of 8, had 10 minutes to get dressed, and here I am in the kitchen at 8 o'clock, just like it said. Yes, but you're still in your bathrobe. <laughs> well, it didn't say how I was to dress. Oh, well, let's go along with it for a while. Pretty soon you'll think up something else and forget all about it. Hey, Liz, is dinner ready? Katie's putting it on the table. Six o'clock shot. Pretty good, huh? Hey, that time budget idea is working fine, isn't it? Wonderful. Let's sit down now. Don't waste time. What is this? Roast beef, corn, potatoes. And over here, grapefruit, fried eggs, bacon, and toast. Well, you see, I have so much to do tomorrow morning, I'm saving time by serving breakfast tonight. Oh. George. Yes, dear. George, I have a confession to make. You were right, and I was wrong. I knew you'd arrive at that conclusion. About what? Oh, you big ham. Just for that, I won't tell you. Yeah, was it about the time schedule? Yes. As much as I hate to admit it, it's been a week now, and we get everything done and still have plenty of leisure. You're so smart. The yeah, man's got to run his home like his office. You're right. Just like an office. Come over and sit on my lap, there. <laughs> is that the way you run your office? That yeah, is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, George. Let's get married. 
We are married. Oh, we couldn't be. I love you too much. Hold me, George. Tighter. 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 Oh, but Liz. Go on. She sent them a bunch of beef to make borscht out of me. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I didn't marry anyone in her right mind. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Not now. Leave me alone, honey. I'm trying to do some bank work. But I've got two hours, three times saved up. Kiss me. No. Just one kiss? All right, just one. Well, then I'll have to make it last two hours. John? You wanted to see me, Mr. Atterbury? Oh, yes, yes. Come in and sit down, boy. I want to talk to you. Anything wrong, sir? No, no. As you know, George, Alexander, the fourth vice president of the bank, is leaving. I noticed his cup was missing from the water cooler. <laughs> yes, yes. And he needs more money. While he felt that the prestige of being vice president of a bank was fine, he wasn't meeting his expenses. So he left to accept a better job. He's going to be a school teacher. <laughs> Smart move. Now, George, I must admit I had you chosen for the advancement to fourth vice president. But the other night when you were so late arriving at my house made me wonder. A man who can't run his own home. Oh, I was afraid you'd think that, Mr. Atterbury, so I reorganized my whole house. You did? Yes, sir. I laid down the law. Nobody's late at my house anymore. I've got them on a strict timetable. Remarkable. George, if you've accomplished this, you're the man for the job. I've done it all right. Why, I've got Liz and Katie running around like a couple of trained seals. No. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to see that. <laughs> well, come on over and take a look. Uh, why don't you and Iris come to dinner tonight? We'll just do that. I'd like Iris to see it, too. If it works for seals, maybe it'll work for an old sea cow. <laughs> All right, now. Let's see, I have 14 minutes. Then it's true. You are on a time schedule. Yes, how did you know? Rudolph told me about it when he called to say we were having dinner with you tonight. Oh, Iris, it's just wonderful. You ought to try it. You get everything done and have loads of time for yourself. You, Benedict Arnold. What do you mean? You can't do this, Liz. We women have spent years convincing husbands that we don't have enough time to do our work. And now you want to ruin everything. Do you realize where this may end? Oh, now, wait a minute, Iris. George is doing this for my own good. I've been wasting a lot of time. Well, now I have more time for myself. Well, that's the way you feel. I must admire you for going through with it in spite of what George is saying about you at the bank. <laughs> oh, George is always saying two things about me. What she said this time. Oh, nothing. <laughs> he told the boys he has you and Katie running around like a couple of trained seals. Oh, oh, he didn't mean it like that. Of course not. <laughs> Just forget I said it, Liz. There's nothing to it. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Plain seals, huh? Of course, it's none of my business, but uh, I'd have more self-respect than to let him get away with it. <laughs> Plain seals, huh? Liz. The thing for you to do is stop this before it gets out of hand. Don't you realize that? Train seals, huh? <laughs> well, what do you say? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, you're giving in. I am not. Don't you know anything about seals? That was the battle cry. Oh, good girl. What are you going to do? Well, here's the first thing I'm going to do. That for his old time chart. That's the spirit. Iris, when you and Miss Atterbury come over tonight, get a good seat down front. You're going to witness the final performance of Professor Cooper's playing field. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Cooper, are you really going ahead with our plans for tonight? I certainly am. Now, here comes Georgie the Atterbury. Get to your post, Katie. The hour is here. Train seals of the world unite. Right in here, Mr. Atterbury. Hello, Iris. Hello, Hello Atterbury. Hello, Liz, girl. Hi, dear. Hey, don't I get a kiss? No time. Well, let's all go in the living room and talk for two minutes and 35 seconds. Oh. <laughs> you must be on a strict time schedule, boy. All right, 
everybody have a chair. How have you been, Mr. Atterbury? Oh, uh, I've been pretty well, thanks, Liz. I did have a touch of a cold last week, but the doctor suggested that... That's all the time for you, Mr. Atterbury. How have you been, Iris? <laughs> <laughs> what well, is uh, uh, Sorry, Mr. Atterbury, you up all your time. Yes. Uh, 6.59. You have one minute to get into the dining room. Everybody run. Come on, Mr. Atterbury. Uh, never mind pulling me, Liz. I'm coming. Everybody sit down. Too slowly to then serve to save time. I hope it isn't too cold. Liz, let's not overdo this thing. My... It looks delicious. Yes, yes, it does. Chicken noodle, my favorite. Pardon me. Hand me that plate, please. But I haven't even started my soup. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Atterbury. Excuse me, Mr. Cooper. Now, wait a minute, Katie. You just brought it in. I can't help it. You've used up your soup time. <laughs> <sighs> it smells so good. <laughs> Liz, I don't understand what's going on. George, it's your idea. Oh, uh, pardon me, but... What is this in my water glass? Let's see. Oh, it's a shirt button. Now, what were you saying, George? <laughs> Liz, Mr. Atterbury has a shirt button in his water glass. Oh, well, I bet I know how it happened. To save time, we're doing the dishes and clothes together in the laundromat. <laughs> Liz, would you step into the hall a minute? No time, George. We've got to start on our salad. How much time do we have for that? And 23 seconds. Well, if you'll give me a paper sack, I'll take it home and eat it later. <laughs> now, Rudolph, don't blame Liz. This whole thing was George's idea. So I understand. George, boy, is this what you mean by a time schedule? No, this is ridiculous. The whole thing is being carried to a... Uh-oh, place. salad time's over. Bring in the new sauce, Katie. Coming. Well, I'm getting faster. I managed to snag half a radish. <laughs> No time for salt, of course. Here you are. Yes, this meat is still frozen solid. It saves time, George. Swallow it like that and let it thaw out later in the evening. <laughs> that does it. I'm sorry, Mr. Atterbury. I guess you've decided about that job by now. I certainly have. It's yours, boy. Mine? After tonight? Well, I can see what's going on. You obviously cracked down too hard on the women folks. They're terrified of you. Afraid of wasting a second. Relax. That can take it a little easier, Mr. Fourth Vice President. Why, George? Well, I guess I have been a little too strict. I think Liz has something to say about this. Don't you, Liz? Well, are you a woman or a trained seal? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> My Favorite Husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.